Hey everyone and welcome back. We're diving into a really fascinating topic today. Um, we're going to be talking about building a culture that really embraces AI, mm -hmm. specifically within organizations. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys gave us so many interesting articles and research to look at. And yeah, it's hot talk. clear this AI adoption thing. It's for sure. It's everywhere, right? Yes. But yeah. here's the thing that really jumped out to us. Okay. When we were prepping. Yeah. Only 15% of employees feel like their company actually has a clear plan for AI. Oh, wow. Like that's... That's pretty low. Yeah. That's yeah. that's a pretty dismal statistic. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly why we wanted to kind of dig into this and, and make sure that, you know, you guys listening are, are ready and, and not going to be part of that other, you know, 85%. Right. So um, we've got some really great real world examples to share today from companies like J.P. Morgan Chase oh, cool. to Siemens. Okay. We're going to see how they're actually making this work. We're going to look at some future trends in AI adoption. And to help us connect all the dots here, well, we've got our expert here. So what's fascinating about all this from your perspective? Well, I think what's really interesting is that this isn't just about implementing a shiny new technology, right? It's about people. Mm -hmm. It's about creating a culture yeah. where employees feel like they're empowered by AI yeah. and not threatened by it. Right. And I think that that all starts with understanding what people are anxious about. Yeah. One of the biggest hurdles, I think, is, as you highlighted, is this fear of job displacement. Oh, absolutely. I it, mean, you it, see yeah. it everywhere, right? Yeah, see, Robots I, are taking over. Yeah, because the headlines all over the place. Right. All over the map. Exactly. Yeah. So how do we combat that fear? Yeah. What are some of the companies doing that are really doing this well? So I think a good example of a company doing this well is J.P. Morgan Chase. They've not only developed like a super detailed AI roadmap, mm -hmm. but they've also made it a living document. Oh, interesting. That evolves with their AI strategy. It's not just like a thing that sits on a shelf gathering dust. Right, yeah. They're constantly updating it, mm -hmm. communicating it through various channels and yeah. making sure everyone in the organization understands how AI fits into the big picture. That's a great point. Yeah. It's not this one and done no. communication oh, thing. It's got to be so, ongoing, I, uh, especially because AI is changing so rapidly. Yeah. And this ties into another crucial element, too, which is training. Mm -hmm. Because even if you have the best communication plan in the world, right? if your employees don't have the skills to actually use AI tools effectively, yeah, you're, then you're going to hit a wall. You're going to hit a wall. Yeah. Like having a shiny new sports car. Exactly. But not knowing how to drive it. Totally. What a waste. Yeah. And speaking of skills gaps, I remember that McKinsey That's statistic. Right. The 43% of organizations 43 per report AI skills shortage as like their primary challenge in adoption. That's huge. Yeah. It's massive. It is. It's a massive roadblock. So how do we even begin to like equip our people with the right skills. Right. Is it all about technical training or is there more to it? I think targeted training is definitely super important. Right. Um, you know, companies like Accenture mm -hmm. are seeing huge success with their own in-house AI learning platforms. Good. They've actually seen something like a 40% boost in adoption rates just by tailoring the training to specific Correct. roles mm -hmm. and needs. But it's not just about, you know, the technical know-how. Okay. Yeah. So what else is important? So think about it this way. You're asking people to change the way they work, mm -hmm. to embrace something totally new. Yeah. That requires like a mindset shift, yeah. a culture shift. So it's not just teaching them how to use the tools. Right. It's helping them understand why it matters and how it benefits them personally as well. Yeah, 100%. And I think that's where leadership comes in. Oh, okay. We need leaders who are really walking the walk, mm. who are championing AI, yeah. and actively using it in their own work. Mm -hmm. Think about Jamie Dimon at J.P. Morgan Chase. Oh. He's a vocal advocate for AI. Okay. And I think that trickles down throughout the organization. It sets the tone from the top. Yeah, right? exactly. This is a priority. Uh -huh. This isn't just a fad. It's not just a fad. This is here to stay. Yeah. And McKinsey's research backs this up as well. Okay. They really emphasize the need to reframe AI as an enabler of human potential, oh, that's... not a replacement for human workers. Yeah. That's a really important distinction. Totally. Instead of fearing it, we should be thinking about how can this help us exactly. be more creative? Yeah. Do our jobs better? Empowering us to do things we couldn't do before. Exactly. And yes. solve problems yeah. we couldn't tackle before. Absolutely. And I think, you know, one company that we looked at is even 
creating like these AI powered innovation labs, oh. giving employees like a safe space oh, yes. to experiment with yeah. AI and see its potential firsthand. I love that. Yeah. Okay. So we talked about clear communication, mm -hmm. targeted training, yeah. and even creating a culture that embraces AI. Totally. But what does this all actually mean for you, yeah. the listener? Right. What can you take away from all of this? I think there are two key takeaways here. Okay. First, don't underestimate the power of communication. Mm -hmm. Remember that 15% statistic. Yeah. Make sure your organization is not falling into that trap. Right. Take a page from J.P. Morgan Chase's playbook. Create a clear, comprehensive AI roadmap and keep that conversation going with your employees. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Communication is key. Absolutely. What's the second big takeaway? Invest in your people. Okay. Give them the training and resources they need to thrive in this AI-powered world. Don't just throw them in the deep end and expect them to figure it out. Equip them with the right skills and show them how AI can make their lives better. Exactly. Not worse. Not worse. And remember, there are so many ways to approach this. Okay. We've really just scratched the surface here. Well, you know what they say, knowledge is power. That's right. And speaking of different approaches, we've got some more really cool strategies to unpack. Oh, yeah. What other creative ways are companies using to get their employees on board with AI? So there's this really interesting tactic that I saw okay. using incentives to encourage AI adoption. Incentives, huh? Yeah. That piqued my interest. Okay. Tell me more. Yeah, so so it's not about like bribery or anything. Okay. It's more about aligning individual goals with the organization's AI objectives. Okay. So, for example, some companies are incorporating AI adoption metrics into performance reviews. Oh, interesting. So, like, if you're actively using AI tools in your work and showing positive outcomes, it'll reflect on your performance. So, it's not just about using AI for the sake of using AI. Exactly. You need to demonstrate that you're using it strategically and effectively right. to achieve business goals. Absolutely. Yeah. And it goes beyond just performance reviews. Okay. Some companies offer like bonuses or rewards for employees who become like internal champions for AI. Internal champions. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. So it's like identifying those early adopters who are really excited about AI. Exactly. And giving them a platform to kind of share their enthusiasm and knowledge with their colleagues. Yeah. They basically become ambassadors for AI. Okay. Demonstrating the benefits and helping their colleagues get over that initial resistance. That's a really smart approach. Yeah. It's like building a grassroots movement totally. from within the organization. Yeah. It's not a top-down mandate. Right. It's creating a culture where people are genuinely excited about AI. And that brings us to another element of this yeah. that I think is so fascinating, which is the power of social influence. Oh, yeah. We tend to look at others, For sure, especially our peers, for guidance and validation. Absolutely. You know, if I see someone that I trust and respect using something successfully, yeah. I'm way more likely to try it. Totally. And companies are leveraging this by highlighting success stories well, that's and right. showcasing how AI is actually making a real difference in different departments. So seeing is believing. Yeah. When you can see concrete examples of how AI is helping your colleagues right. be more productive or, yeah. or solve problems faster or even just have more time for the creative work, mm -hmm. it becomes much less intimidating and much more appealing. Absolutely. And some companies are even going a step further by establishing like dedicated AI centers of excellence. AI centers of excellence. Now, that sounds impressive. Yeah. What are those all about? So think of them as like centralized hubs of AI expertise. They bring together data scientists, engineers, business leaders, anyone who has a stake in AI adoption. So it's not just a tech thing. No, it's about getting everyone on the same page. Okay. Aligning the technology with the business strategy. Right. And ensuring that AI initiatives are actually solving real world problems. And it's a great way to foster collaboration. Yeah. And knowledge sharing across different departments. For sure. You got all these minds working together, yeah. sharing ideas and pushing the boundaries. What a cool concept. Yeah. And a good example of this is RBC, the Royal Bank of Canada. Okay. They have Borealis AI which is this innovation hub that's dedicated to developing like cutting edge AI solutions specifically for financial services. Wow, so they're really pushing the envelope in that industry. Yeah, big time. That's awesome. Yeah. It seems like these centers are playing a crucial role in, in driving innovation and making sure that companies are staying ahead of the curve. Absolutely, and let's not forget about starting small with pilot projects. Ah, uh, yes. 
The classic pilot project. Yeah. Tried and true method for a reason. Exactly. Pilot projects allow companies to test and validate AI solutions in like a controlled environment. Okay. It's a way to minimize risk, gather valuable feedback from users, right. and build confidence in AI's capabilities. Like a proving ground for AI. Yeah, exactly. You get to see how it works in the real world. Right. Identify any potential challenges and, and fine tune your approach before rolling it out company wide. Exactly. And we have a great example of this with the Flanders Investment and Trade Agency. Yeah, okay. They started with this pilot AI program that was focused on attracting foreign investment. Hmm. And the insights they gathered were instrumental in shaping their larger AI implementation. So starting small can lead to big results. Absolutely. Okay, so we've got incentives, social influence, AI centers of excellence, and pilot projects. Yep. That's a pretty impressive toolkit. It is, and it shows that there's no one-size-fits-all approach. Okay. The key is to understand the different options. See what others are doing, and then tailor your strategy to your organization's specific needs. Right. It's about finding the right mix of strategies. Exactly. To create that AI-ready culture yeah. that we keep talking about. Uh -huh. It's about communication training, leadership, mm -hmm. and all these other cool initiatives that we've been discussing. Absolutely. Sounds like there's a lot to consider. Yeah, there is. But before we get overwhelmed, let's bring it back to the listener. Okay. What are those core takeaways right. that they should be focusing on? Well, it all comes back to those two fundamental pillars we discussed earlier. Okay. Clear communication and targeted training. Our trusty duo. Yeah. They keep popping up for a reason. They're the foundation of everything else. Mm -hmm. You can have the coolest AI tools. Right. The most brilliant data scientists. Okay. But if you don't communicate effectively with your employees mm. and give them the right skills... Yeah. You're setting yourself up for failure. Right. You can have the best car in the world, yeah. but if you don't know how to drive it, exactly. it's not going to get you very far. It's not going to do much. And if you don't know where you're going, right. that's a whole other problem. That's a whole other issue. Exactly. So let's delve a little deeper into why these two elements are so important. Yeah. Remember that statistic we talked about earlier? Yeah. Only 15% of employees feel like their company has a clear plan for AI. Yeah. That's a recipe for disaster. It is. Yeah. It breeds uncertainty, fear resistance. Totally. They start to worry about their jobs. Mm. They don't understand how it fits into their roles. Right. And they're less likely to embrace it. Exactly. But when you communicate clearly yeah. and transparently... You can address those fears head on. Okay. You explain your AI vision. Mm -hmm. You outline how it's going to impact different roles. Yeah. And you create a sense of shared understanding and purpose. You're bringing everyone along on the journey. Exactly. Not just the tech savvy folks. Yeah. Yeah. And targeted training plays a huge role in this. Okay. Because it empowers employees to actually participate in that journey. Right. It's not enough to just tell them about AI. Exactly. You need to give them the skills and knowledge. Give them the tools. To actually use it yeah. effectively. And that's where those tailored training programs come in right. that are designed for different roles and skill levels. When you invest in your employees' development, mm -hmm. you're showing them that you value their contributions. Absolutely. And you're committed to their success in this new AI-powered world. Totally. It's about building confidence, fostering enthusiasm, Yep. And turning those passive observers into active participants exactly. in the AI revolution. And that brings us to a really important question for you, the listener. Given everything we've talked about, what's one small step you could take this week to start building a more AI-ready culture in your organization? Oh, that's such a great question to leave our listeners with. You yeah. Know, it doesn't have to be this massive overhaul. Right. But it could be as simple as starting a conversation with your team about AI. Absolutely. Mm. Even just like sharing an interesting article about AI's potential in your industry yeah, or brainstorming a task that could be automated with an AI tool. Mm. The key is to just start somewhere. Yeah. Small steps, yeah. big impact, right? Exactly. So thinking back on all the amazing examples we've uncovered today, what really stood out to you? You know, I think it's the variety of approaches that's so fascinating to me. Like yeah. you've got JT Morgan Chase with their living AI roadmap. Yeah. Then you've got Accenture with their super successful training platform. And those AI-powered innovation labs are still swirling around in my head. Oh, yeah. What a clever way to foster that culture of experimentation. Right. 
And we didn't even get to touch on all the different incentive models out there. Yeah, there's so much. From gamification to integrating AI metrics into performance reviews, like it's a whole buffet of options. It's like choose your own adventure for AI adoption, oh. which I think is what makes it such an exciting time to be in this space. Yeah. There's no one size fits all solution. Yeah. So it really encourages creative thinking. Absolutely. The companies that are going to thrive are the ones that embrace that flexibility yeah. and adapt their approach to their unique needs. Well said. Yeah. So to our listeners, we challenge you to take that small step this week. Yes. Start that conversation, explore a new tool, mm -hmm. or just simply reflect on everything we've talked about today. Mm -hmm. The future of work is changing so rapidly, and AI is a huge part of that. It's not about fearing the change. It's, it's about understanding it yeah. and leveraging it. To create a more productive, engaging, and innovative workplace. Absolutely. So remember, every journey starts with a single step. That's right. That's it for today's deep dive into the world of AI adoption. Thanks for listening. We hope you found it insightful and, dare I say, inspiring. Yeah. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible.